Good morning, it's Bob Chu from Stewart and Isla Mirada Boat Works, and today we've got something really special. Um, we've been working on this project for over two years, and what it is, is the brand new deck for our 24 Isla Mirada Bay Boat. About 10 months ago, I did a video on the introduction of our 18 Isla Mirada skiff, and that video took a while. I kind of, I'm warning you here, there's so much to talk about. Maybe, you know, you need to get a nice cold adult beverage and put your feet up on the desk if you're going to watch this whole video because it's going to be a little lengthy. Um, but yes, this boat is in process. It's a Friday morning. As soon as we're done, it goes back in the shop. That's why we're not on the water. And this boat is working its way towards delivery to its owner on Monday morning, bright and early, before it goes to Mobile, Alabama. So I'm going to welcome you aboard. And I hope you're as jazzed about this as we are when you get a chance to see it. So I'm gonna start in the bow. It's a little hard on this boat to know where to start because we made so many changes and improvements. Um, but nevertheless, let's start here. If we start in the bow with this power pole move trolling motor, customer's choice, of course, uh, 36 volt. Um, you probably have all seen it. If you're looking at a bay boat, a video you're probably familiar with the power pole move we're putting a lot of them on seems to be uh, preferable so that's the start next we go to the anchor locker so our anchor locker used to have a chute in it to hang an anchor it no longer does we we hang the anchor now more traditionally in receivers built into the mold of the deck so that's kind of a simple change. Still plenty of room there for anchor and anchor line. As we move aft to the next hatch, this becomes significantly different. I'm actually gonna stand down in here. So I am in a recess that's capable of holding a five gallon bucket or a three and a half gallon bucket. It has a drain, of course, drains into the bilge. Um, and then on either side, there's flat uh, horizontal storage like the old boat. Um, the, the bucket differential in, in size is that if you put in a five gallon bucket, it will stick above this horizontal storage area on, on the flats on both sides. And that'll be fine. The hatch closes, of course. So yes, it holds a five gallon bucket quite easily. If on the other hand, you want to use a three and a half gallon bucket, that will actually fit down. And then we have an optional floor piece that can fit in over that three and a half gallon bucket and make this continuous storage all the way across this hatch. So it's versatile, you choose what you want or maybe you don't want to put a bucket on the boat but it's there, you can, you can do whatever you want. Remember this boat is a boat in process so you're going to see stuff like dirty feet and uh, cushions missing and so on and so forth. Now. There's probably five major things that we did with the new deck, but one of them was we wanted to get the live bait capacity out of the stern of the boat. Get it so it's not all concentrated in the stern. So previously you could hold 100 gallons of live bait aft. And, and or a lot of customers get a centerline one and one to starboard and not to port. This boat is extremely balanced, as anybody will tell you that's ever ridden in one. Um, but nonetheless, we wanted to get the live bait on the center line. So we've increased the size of the forward casting platform, which is something we heard from some customers. Um, and we did it by adding a 35 gallon live well in the bow of the boat. Um, this is a, a deep live well. My foot's in the bottom right now uh, and wet um, and it's pressurized so somebody sitting here running not a drop of water comes out and hits you at least our first run on this boat yesterday. Um, so 35 gallons here we think hey that makes sense first it balances the boat bow to stern um, and I'll talk about the other live wells as we get further aft um, and this is standard. The other thing it does is a lot of times if you're throwing a cast net, often you're on the bow. 
So it kind of facilitates you're already here anyway. Let's go ahead and, you know, feed this well with a bunch of bait. Unlike a lot of other bay boats where they'll put a little 10 or 12 gallon live well as pitch baits, this is meant to keep your baits active the whole day long and not just a little, you know, kind of, hey, I gave you a live well there kind of story. 35 gallons. As you move aft, you run into our rod locker storage. Now, in the past, the rod locker held rods up to seven and a half feet. The rod lockers now hold up to a 10 foot rod. So they, so you can store your fly rods in the rod locker. We're getting more and more customers with our bay boats that fly fish. So that, that's a huge, huge uh, advantage of this system. Um, Something I've overlooked already, but uh, this is apt to happen because there's so many things to point out. Look at these gutters. These gutters are what we call skiff gutters. We built these gutters for our 18 Isla Mirada. A lot of other brand skiffs have something similar, but the point is they're extremely wide and extremely deep, probably nearly two inches deep. Why? Of course, you know, to keep everything in the locker dry. Our previous deck, which was designed way back when, like 30 years ago, had a little, you know, a, a, a gutter, but wasn't much of a gutter. It rolled, it was low, it wasn't wide. This is going to keep, whatever you keep in there, whether you put rods in there or not, it's going to be dry. And every hatch has that. Just totally, totally cool. Now with this deck configuration, we've designated where the stereo speakers go. Yeah, that's a trade-off. Everything's a trade-off. I've been doing boat design work for 25 years off and on for different companies and uh, working with naval architects and so forth. And everything's a trade-off, you know, an inch here, an inch there. It's all a game of inches. So this is where the forward stereo speakers now go. Big enough for two 88JL audios and a 10 inch JL sub. Um, the depth between here and there to the live well tub, yeah, it's very important. We don't know yet if other brands will fit it. It seems like all we do is JL audio, but if you had another brand, we definitely have to check that depth to make, it, make sure it's gonna fit. And uh, we'll do more speakers as we go aft. Then moving to the fish box. Oh, this one's tight. So we'll do some still photos later, but on this one, we, it's still hinged sidewards. Um, what we've done with the fish box is we've molded a fish box now down below the deck where it, it can be truly insulated. Um, and, a, and a standard boat that will just uh, drain back into the bilge if you're not gonna use it as a fish box. Um, or if you just don't like pumps, um, the option on the price list is for this to be insulated and to have a diaphragm pump to pump it overboard, that pump being located in the bilge. So we believe most people will do that. Um, it's, it's a long box, it's fairly wide, and it goes outboard of the deck. So you, you, it's a legitimate offshore fish box. Um, on this particular one, um, yeah, we hinged it this way, and, and that's the way we're, we're going to go forward with, with, this, with this locker in particular. Okay. Um, it's probably a lot of talking for now. Maybe we'll hit the front of the console here and I'll explain what's going on there. So as we look at towards the console now, um, this console is exactly the same as the previous console. Console is the same. Second station's the same. Um, we have added one option that's not on this boat, which is to make the seat in the second station slide. Um, so we can talk about that another, on another boat when we get that. I wanted to talk about focus on the cooler here. Um, this is an 81 quart frigid rigid fiberglass cooler. So it's not exactly standard, but footprint wise it is. The 60 frigid rigid Rectangular cooler is standard, and it's just shorter. It's about three, three, three inches shorter. 
Um, and yes, it'll come with a cushion when we get it this afternoon. Um, and then there's an option on the option sheet for the 55 quart frigid rigid half moon cooler that you've seen on some of our other boats. So any combination, you know, yeah, you could do the 81, a 60 standard and 55 is optional as well, the half moon. Um, as far as going back into here, I mean, you know, it's all, I, I won't be able to see it on the camera, but you know, Simrad VHF for a guy that's not constantly on it, um, power pole charge charger, uh, and of course, you know, our C-Zone digital switching system, the beautiful wiring that we do, <laughs> and the VHF is on. So, yeah, so that's that story, but, and the four batteries are down below it, um, as, as usual. So, you know, again, there's so many changes to the boat, minor, but we spent two years doing it, so uh, it hopefully makes sense. One of the changes was, instead of the rod holders going on the side of the console, which virtually everybody ordered, we now weld them between the legs. It, great access to the rods, that hasn't changed, but, you know, obviously it stiffened up the pipework, so why not do it? Um, as you move to the helm again, it is straightforward. It has not changed. You can, you can get up this direction. There'll be a, a C-deck pad here as well, um, but most people are now going from the cooler top to this step and in the front, uh, but it's an either or. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, C-Zone digital switching, um, jack plate controls, spotlight controls, 19 inch Simrad, autopilot. Uh, this is a guides boat actually and he currently has an old 24 and wanted the new one. So anyway, I'm not going to waste too much time there. You all know what that looks like from other videos, I would assume. Um, here's the big thing in this boat. So one of the, uh, there's several major changes, like I mentioned a forward live well. So this is a live well. So this we designed 40 gallon leaning post live well. It's got a window in it in the back. It's got a clear lid. It will have a cushion here for storage into this fiberglass tray. Uh, fixed backrest, rod holders. Um, yes, the rods do clear the other rod holders on the back of the uh, hard top. Um, one cool thing here, we've not done before, but because we didn't design our live well prior to this. So yeah, tilled out, waterproof, sealed Perco trays, four of them. Um, and obviously if you need to get into plumbing or anything of that nature, you can get into it right through this direction. Very, very cool. So if you are familiar with our previous deck, you'd say, well, no way could you put an optional 40 gallon live well in there. There'd be no room aft of it before you'd hit the aft deck. Well, we did something about that. What we did was we lengthened the cockpit by reducing the length of the aft deck. We reduced that aft deck by 11 inches. So if this were a standard live well, you'd have 11 more inches between the rods on the leaning post or the rods in the top of the hard top or second station, you'd have that much more fishable space around the back side. Um, the other thing we did in conjunction with that, again, if you're familiar with the other deck, we changed the gunnel board length. We went to, again, kind of a skiff feature, again, because more and more guys fly fishing out of this boat. Um, we went to a nine foot, three inch long gunnel board with completely exposed rod racks for horizontal rod storage. Now, yeah, you could put anything in there, obviously, gaffs, boat hooks, whatever you want. This guide has a kind of an interesting thing that there's a new trend happening, I guess, I'm just aware of, where this is a handheld transducer on a pole, and he will take it out and actually spin it around for side scanning to find bait, predators, whatever. So that's what he has currently we have stowed here for him. Um, another thing that I'd like to point out, just people might go, well, what the heck is that? There's a 
uh, tulip rod holder here at the base of the live well. Again, something that I'm not familiar with, but became familiar with during the build. I guess um, cane pole fishing and competitive cane pole fishing is now taking off on the Gulf Coast. So this is to hold a cane pole, which can be as long as 14, 16, 18 feet long. It'll sit in here, run up here, secure loosely to the hard top for when you're running, and then extend beyond the hard top. So it's a, it's a different thing. Uh, go on YouTube and watch it. They already have cane pole tournaments. So um, anyway, back to the boat. So people might say, well, gosh, if you made that 11 inches, you know, further back, then you lost capacity back there. Well, one thing we did was we went from a 35 gallon live well aft to a 25 gallon live well on the center line. So the standard boat has a 25 gallon aft center line live well and a 35 gallon forward center live well, 60 gallons standard. This 40 gallon leaning post live well is for the guy who wants 100 gallons but they're balanced, bow to stern, so it eliminates squat in the stern. Not that it was horrible before, but hey, the boat will go shallower now because of it being better balanced. And side to side, it's all on the center line. So you can't be running along with one live well full and the other one, you know, so you're, you, you get the message. So it, it's a cool idea, it worked really well. Now. The bilge access hatch is actually bigger than our previous bilge access hatch, and it lifts completely out of the way like the previous one did. You can see everything. I mean, it's, it's a dream bilge like it's always been. Um, so what about these lockers? Holy mackerel, something must have happened if you took out 11 inches. Well, the previous tubs before on either side were part of the deck design, part of the deck mold. So when you make something like that part of the, the deck design, you lose capacity because it has to come inboard to come up and marry to the deck. So instead, we made both of those compartments tubs, standalone tubs, and they are bigger than the opening, both longer and wider. And when the deck is built, those tubs are then glassed onto the underside of the deck with the deck upside down. So technically you lost no capacity. Dimensionally, yeah, it's a little different than the, than the old ones, but capacity-wise, they're identical to the old aft lockers. But now we're pushing not to use them as live wells. So um, yeah, that's, that's a lot of it. Um, as long as we're here, one other thing we did, which was paramount importance to us, Back to that live well situation. If you had three of them full across the back and you had two or three anglers across the back and certain sea conditions, a little sloppy, choppy condition, you could get water to come ever so slightly up onto the cockpit sole through the cockpit scuppers. So what did we want to do there? We raised the floor. We raised the floor one inch um, so as to one, when we moved that aft bulkhead back, it made the scuppers go further back, closer to the stern of the boat. Therefore, a little bit more inclined to maybe have that problem. Um, but by raising the floor an inch, we overcame that problem. And you said, well, geez, the freeboard was, sh you know, 17 inches. Maybe it's a little short to begin with. Is it 16? No, we raised the deck cap an inch as well. So it's still the exact same height as before. It's 17 inches high, which everybody has said they love about our boat because this is a fish boat. Yeah, you can take the family to the sandbar and you can cruise. <laughs> Some people run to the Bahamas in these, but you know, at its heart, this is a hardcore fish boat and that's who we're answering to with all the changes that we made. So uh, a couple more last mo things. We did have a technical problem, so we have a little different audio happening right now, but I'll try not to uh, bore you too much for too long. you notice the hatches open aft. That's a trick from the skiff world. I guess other people have done it, but the big advantage to that is that if you're standing outside the boat, the boat's on the trailer, you now can get in to access anything in that hatch. 
before when they opened outboard, well, that just blocked your access. So I think that's a very cool feature. Um, all three of them are on gas shocks. You can see the bigger access to the live well, even though it's a smaller, slightly smaller capacity. Um, and yeah, uh, I just, it's very, very cool. Uh, more thought, big gutters, things should stay very dry. Um, power remains the same. Um, Yamaha, a couple bigger Mercs until Yamaha comes out with their 350. Uh, power poles, uh, Minn Kota Raptors, swim platforms, ladders, you know, so on and so forth. None of that's changed. So I guess the essence of the message here is we did not change the bottom and we never ever will. That was magic. We can't take credit for it. We bought the molds. If you haven't ridden in one of these boats, you deserve to have yourself have that opportunity. You deserve a ride in the boat to feel what it's like because it is that much different. Um, but everything from the rug rail up, excluding the console and the tops, is all new, all different, and we believe it's, it's all feedback from what you told us over the five years that we've owned Isla Mirada Boat Works. So I, I appreciate you watching. Sorry it was kind of long, but it, it was worthy of it. And uh, come on down to Stewart. Let us build you a boat. Guaranteed you will love it. Thank you very much for watching.